continuing with our discussion on the, the course business law and contract management. We want to look at another area, very important area, so far as business is concerned. Though the fundamental principles in the study of this course is the contract law, the elements of contract law, we also need to look at sale of goods and the law regulating or governing the sale of goods. We will not go too deep or into details because of the scope of the course, they will look at the fundamental principles that are governing this area of business transactions. And uh, it's important to note that the law on sale of goods was codified by the Sale of Goods Act 1962 or Act 137. Act 137 is the law governing this area of the law. However, according to the provisions of the Act, if the Act is not enough to deal with a particular problem, resort could be made to the common law. So once there is any area that is not covered by our Act, which has primacy to the common law, then we will refer to the Act itself and not the common law. So the Act covers all countries of sale or all areas or contracts of sale made in Ghana, including those entered into on behalf of the Republic of Ghana. So particularly this refers to Ghana, it's a Ghanaian Law Act. So we're looking at that as the guiding law. So what do we mean by sale of goods? When we take the law, the Act itself, Section 1 of the Sale of Goods Act, it states a contract of sale of goods, of goods is a contract whereby the seller agrees to transfer the property in goods to the buyer for a consideration called price. And this is consisting wholly or partly of money. So buy and sell is a business contract. You sell goods and somebody to agree to pay. So we have to understand the elements of the sale of goods. Property refers to the title or ownership of goods as in the section 81. So we have to first of all understand what are goods. Our understanding will be based on the provision of the Act, section 81. When we say goods, we mean goods which are movable property or detached part from immovable property. There are some properties which are immovable, but part of it could be really separated as immovable. Well, at times when you are selling a whole house, you're selling a whole house with all the property within the house, it's a whole. It's immovable property. The house is an immovable property, but all contents of the house, the furniture and other things, could be moved as, as movable property. So part of that whole household that is sold will be movable property. And therefore, immovable can also have part of it which is movable. Parties to a contract for sale of goods, we can look at section 2, subsection 1 of the Act. We have different types of sale. It could be auction sale. We have different types of auctions. And we have specific goods. Goods, by specific goods, we mean goods which have been identified and agreed upon by the two parties for the transaction of a sale and buy. Then we could have also unascertained goods. Unascertained goods. These are goods 
to be manufactured or if it's a crop to be grown by the seller in the future, which are not readily available, but the contract can be made, agreement can be made on it. You may order even a vehicle to be produced for a company or even a state, and agreement could be made this particular year, but delivery will be in maybe five years' time in the future, but the agreement is made today. So you have not ascertained the goods, but a contract is made for future delivery of the goods. So we have specific goods that you can see agreeing and uh, there will be a contract or and ascertained goods, goods which could be manufactured in the future. So all constitute goods. So goods, shuttles or movable property that can be sold or traded with another person. So the most important principle underlying the transaction of goods or transaction in goods is existence of the goods. Before you can make a sale of goods, the goods must be in existence. If you see section 9 of the Act, this is an implied condition of the contract of sale of goods. The goods must be available and even if not, it gives the seller the opportunity to enter into a contract and procure the goods. So we can procure the goods by a contract, a contract stating that we have agreed on future production of the goods which will be delivered in the future. Also, another principle that is very important is the title to the goods. Apart from the existence of the good or the future existence of the goods, you also have title to goods. When we say title to goods, under this duty, the seller must have a right to sell at the time the property is to pass from the buyer to the seller. So, to have a title to goods, then you must have got a right to sell. And to have a right to sell, then it means you have full ownership rights to the property. Then you have at least some of these rights, the right of ownership or the right of occupation and the right to even give to another person, the right of occupation, the right of possession, you must have all the rights to be an, an owner of the property. You cannot transfer a property in which you don't have a title or you don't have ownership. If you do that, then the person who is buying or taking over the property will also not have any such title or prop of the property. You will not have any right because he who has no right cannot transfer a right to another person. Then you also don't have any right to the property. In the case of Roland versus Deva, the observation of Atkin is that the buyer has not received any part of that property or goods for which he contracted to receive namely the property and the right to possession. And that being so, there has been a total failure of consideration. So in that case, there has not been a right of possession, if that is the case, or in the agreement, it is agreed that there will be a deliverance or transfer of the property before the right can be transferred to the other party. How is deliverance of goods performed under this Act? When you look at section 15 of the Act, Act 137, the seller must be willing and prepared to deliver the goods in exchange for the price. <clears throat> he must not be quest into selling, but must be willing and prepared to deliver the goods.
in exchange for the price. And already I said, you must have got title to it. You must be the rightful owner of the property in goods before you can transfer. Without that, you cannot transfer. If someone has given you a property to possess only, then you cannot transfer it. Or to occupy it. If it's a house or a room, you have to occupy it. But they have not given you the right of transfer or selling it to another person. Then you cannot do that. That is, if it is immovable. For movables, there must be an agreement on the basis that the product or the goods belong to you and you have the right to sell them and you are willing to do that. You are not forced into it. Section 18 of the Act. There must be actual or physical delivery. There are many forms of delivery of goods from one person to the other. That is bringing the goods to the doorsteps of the place agreed upon, the venue, actual and physical delivery of the goods to the other person. If you buy a car and the delivery point is at a particular port or a warehouse, then that is done and actually there is a delivery of the goods or the car from the buyer to the from the seller to the buyer. Excuse me. It could also be in form delivery could be in form of documents of title. Documents of title. You may buy a car, but the car itself may not be transferred to you, but the documents or the papers covering the car could be delivered and uh, purported to be giving you authority over the, uh, the, the good. Once you have got possession of the particular documents relating to the car, then we assume that there has been delivery of the goods, though the physical delivery has not been done. It's possible or a method of uh, doing that delivery of goods. And the transfer of rights to possession of the goods. So once the goods are transferred to another person, the right to the goods is also transferred. The right of possession of the good is also automatically transferred to the person. And once it's transferred, risk also moves together with the transfer of the goods. And therefore, once it's delivered, any danger or any accident, once it's delivered, then you have to be responsible for that. Unless the seller is still keeping with that delivery and any consequence, you will have to bear it because he has not really delivered physically as agreed upon. If that is the, the agreement, seller hands over the means of obtaining control over the goods. So if you have sale of goods in a warehouse, you have not taken delivery physically of the goods but you have the keys to the room, everything is handed over to you, then there is the presumption that there is a transfer of the property to you. You have, you have control over the whole product. You have control over it. Once you have the key to the warehouse, then they've given you the authority. Also, time of delivery is important. The time of delivery, you can... Uh, Reception 16 of the Act. If no time is fixed, what happens? Delivery shall be within a reasonable time. A reasonable time is allowed. Reasonableness will depend on the circumstances under which the agreement is made and the type of products involved. If, if it's a perishable goods, time will be considered on that basis. And uh, other circumstances will determine. So reasonableness will be determined by how the conditions are made concerning the conditions and warranties concerning the product. So that you don't breach the condition of the contract. But when time of delivery is breached, the buyer has the right to reject the goods on certain conditions. 
normally, as we have learned under contract law, terms of a contract, we have conditions and warranties. And conditions are the roots of the contract. They are the main terms of the contract. When breached, then the contract can be uh, rejected or rejected and even ask for damages when a condition is breached. The main term is breached by the other party. Then the other party has the right to uh, even reject those goods. And if it is a warranty, these are minor terms. When they are breached, normal circumstances, under normal circumstances and under common law, uh, you cannot reject the goods, but you may be asked to pay damages for the inconvenience and other problems associated with the delivery of the goods. Maybe the time or the quantity, the color, and the, all of them, uh, the person will be asked to only pay compensation in terms of money, but not to reject. Only under a condition that there can be that method. And uh, under the sale of goods, we have other clauses which really are exception to this general common law rule. To the general common law rule. Because the parties may expressly agree that delivery be made at a different time. It's possible parties may agree that different times may be allocated where delivery can be done. And under the, our law, the same act, the sale of goods acts under the Ghanaian law provides that parties in the sale of goods will have 